Hello everybody, uh, Scott Meyer here with Artist Network and this is Drawing Together where we typically meet live every Wednesday 3 p.m. Eastern to draw together. Um, but I am in isolation this week so I cannot bring you the project that I had intended. Um, so what I brought for you today instead is the first week of my course on drawing perspective. So this is the foundations of perspective drawing, one point, two point, and three point perspective. The course goes on to cover more complex issues like drawing interiors and structures, curves and inclined planes and more. Uh, the, my objective in the course was to help you to develop an intuitive understanding of perspective. So if you want to continue on and, and really, really study it more deeply, you can. But if you want instead to just develop confidence to get out into the world and improve your painting and drawing, and that's what the hope in the course is. So if you like the course, uh, you like what you see here and you want to see the rest of the course, if you're an Artist Network member, you can see the whole thing in your video library. Um, you can purchase it individually as well. And I also cover a lot of these issues in my book, See, Think, Draw. I'll provide a link to all of those in the descriptions below. Uh, so uh, join me next week uh, when I will be back and healthy and uh, drawing live. We'll be working on a master copy of John Singer Sargent, uh, really trying to understand his process and mark making a little bit more deeply. So um, thank you all for making the show what it is. I'm really bummed that I can't be with you live for this first episode of the year, but we'll be back next week. I will see you all on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Scott here with Artist Network and I want to welcome you to this course on linear perspective. So the objective of this course is to give you the skills necessary so that you can apply linear perspective in your work as you need to. Um, it's important for you to know that perspective is just a tool. Uh, it's something that you can use or reject as the artwork dictates. It's up to you whether or not you want to apply this in your own work. But if you don't know how it works, you won't have that choice. So this is really helpful to develop that sense. And my, my hope is that you'll walk away from this course with an intuitive sense for perspective so that you can look at something your own, in your own work and know when it's off and know how to correct it. Uh, we can take linear perspective um, to a, a variety of levels from something that's very basic to something that's very complex. And what I'm hoping here is that you'll walk away knowing the fundamentals of it. And then this will provide a base for you to jump off of and dig into perspective uh, as much or as little as you want. There are a few keys to success I'd like to point out as we get started. First is you want to be willing to do work that will not be seen in the final drawing. Um, a lot of what happens in perspective is at the beginning stages, there are light lines that you make that will be hidden in the final version. So you have to be willing to do a lot of work and knowing that you're not gonna see any of it at the end. Um, you also have to be willing to take the time to do these exercises. I have observation exercises as well as mechanical drawing exercises. So you're actually gonna be doing work and you're going to be going out into the world and observing how perspective functions. And so it's important that you do these exercises. I want you to go slow as we do these exercises as well. If you take it slow and you go step by step, you will retain that information much more concretely. You'll be able to internalize it faster if you actually take your time doing the work and really focus on what you're doing. Thinking um, out loud, saying what you're doing to yourself while you're working can be a great way to really internalize these concepts. And I want you to think about this process like putting together a puzzle. You're gathering information about the subject and you're moving those pieces around, allowing that image to form on the table as you're working. So let's take a look at the materials here. It's really simple and I don't want you to go out there and spend a lot of money on the materials. Paper and pencil is all that you need. If you have simple eight and a half by 11 printer paper, that'll work. But if you can go larger, that's better. Um, here I have an 18 by 24 sheet of paper, so I'll be doing some exercises on that. I also have some 11 by 14 um, sheets of paper. I have a smaller sketchbook. Um, I have a variety of pencils, an ebony pencil and an 8B. I like dark, soft marks. Uh, it helps me to see what I'm doing and it gives me a nice variety of line weights. Uh, I also have a white pencil when I'm going to be working on darker toned paper. Uh, a rubber eraser, a kneaded eraser is essential for lifting up your underdrawing or correcting mistakes. 
Um, and it's important to have both of them uh, handy because they are both useful in, in different ways. Um, and the final thing is a straight edge. Having a straight edge can be really handy to correct um, and straighten out some of your marks. But I also want to be clear that it creates a very mechanical line. And I don't recommend it for all drawing. For the purposes of learning and understanding perspective, I think it's a helpful tool. But for a lively and energetic work of art, I can find it, that it's, uh, it makes static and rigid marks that aren't really helpful. So um, I just want to keep that in mind um, as we're working that, again, this is just a tool for you to apply. So get your materials ready. We're going to dig in. I want to start by talking about some of the limitations that we face uh, when trying to understand perspective. Because it works for some people, but not for others. And for, for some of us, we really have to work hard at it. And I want to describe why that is and what we can do to get you out of that rut. So why is it so hard for some of us to grasp perspective? It should seem easy in that we simply replicate what, what we're looking at, what's in front of us. But the reality is that it becomes much more of a challenge than that. And that's because of several different things. Uh, primarily what's happening is our brain is having to make a choice on how to interpret the subject. Um, and let's take a look at this cup that we have here. We understand it to be a cup. It has a round top. It has a flat bottom. It's a very simple rendering of the cup. But it's not what a cup looks like. Instead, it's what a cup is. This is the literal truth of a cup. If we pull this cup out here, we have a round top. We have a flat bottom. And when confronted with this cup, our brain has to make certain decisions about what's important what we need to know about that cup. And what's important to us as human beings is to understand that this cup has a round top, and it is circular, but it has a flat bottom. And it's flat because we can set it on the table and we, it won't roll away. We know that it will be stable because it has a flat bottom. The round quality of the bottom is less critical to us. If all we thought about is the roundness of the cup, we might envision it rolling away. So instead, we're prioritizing the flatness of it. And because of that, we typically draw it with a flat bottom. So what we're going to ask ourselves to do in this course is to switch our thinking. And we're, instead of prioritizing the literal truth of an object, we are going to prioritize the optical truth. We're going to look at the lines and the curves that we are actually, in, actually seeing and what our brain is using to interpret that information. Another example here is of this room. And what we see are we see diagonal lines suggesting depth. We see a back wall with a door, uh, a window. Uh, we see another window here and another door. Um, but what we see here are these lines leading upward. And they're parallel with the floor lines. Now that is a literal truth. We know in a room that the floor and the ceiling are parallel. Now optically, it doesn't work that way. What, what is happening when we're in a room is we are taking in all the visual information and our brain is extracting out the useful information. And what's useful to us is to know that the room has a parallel floor and a parallel ceiling. If we thought of the room as slanting, we might enter into that space in, a, in an odd way. We may feel less secure about it. And so again, this is another place where we are confronted with having to choose between prioritizing the literal truth of a space and the optical truth. And so what I'm asking you to do throughout this course is to really start to think about what you are seeing versus what you know about the object, what you think about the object, and how it feels. The first step to getting out of this is to follow these exercises step by step. And if you do that, you start to build up a muscle memory. You start to see the illusion taking place on the page so that you can fall into an understanding of that optical truth and get beyond the literal understanding of the object. And when you do that, you create an effective illusion on the page that triggers in the viewer an understanding of what that space was. And we ultimately want the viewer to think about the literal truth. When a, when a viewer is looking at a drawing of a cup, we want them to think about the physical quality of the cup. We want them to understand that it is a flat bottom and a round top, even though they're seeing a round bottom and a round top. So let's dig into it. The next step here is to really start to look at what linear perspective is and how it came about. So what is linear perspective? 
Linear perspective is a tool that artists have developed to create a convincing illusion of depth in your work. And it all comes down to one fundamental idea. The idea that two lines that are parallel with one another will appear to converge at a common point off in the distance. So let's start by looking at this simple cube here. And we all know it has three dimensions. It has, um, it has width, it has height, and it has depth. But what's helpful for us is to determine where the parallel edges are. And so you're going to have three sets of parallel edges here. You can have these lines moving in this direction that are all parallel with one another. You have these vertical edges are parallel with one another. And you have these lines here that are par parallel with one another. Now, early on when linear perspective was developed, artists realized that you can use diagonal lines to create depth. And so we could create a simple box like this. There we have, simple box. And it has the qualities that we just described in this box. It has three sets of parallel lines. We have these vertical edges here that are parallel. We have these depth dimension lines that are parallel. And we have the width dimension lines that are parallel as well. Now this doesn't create a convincing illusion of depth, yet it displays the literal truth of the object. The diagonal lines is an automatic cue for us that this is something that has depth, but it's not quite convincing. This is called isometric perspective, where the diagonal lines remain parallel with one another. Now with linear perspective, what we're going to observe is that these diagonal lines actually will appear to meet at a common point off in the distance. So that is the foundation of perspective there, is that we are actually creating an illusion on, on the page. We are veering from the literal truth of the object and creating diagonal lines that move in different directions, but are drawn in such a way that they create a convincing illusion of depth. So our first drawing exercise will be to create a sheet full of boxes drawn in one point perspective. So what does one point perspective mean? Well, simply put, it means that we are drawing only one dimension of this cube in perspective. We're going to be drawing the depth dimension in perspective. We're going to have one vanishing point that all the lines receding away from us will lead to. Uh, and now this will become clear, it'll make more sense as we move through the course. I'm going to be giving you some observation exercises where you can really see this play out in the natural world. So, but for now, I want you just to get comfortable drawing simple boxes in one point perspective. So let me show you how it's done. The first step will be to create a line, a horizontal line, your horizon line. Your next step will be to place a point somewhere on the line, somewhere in the middle. And with that in place, you want to draw a box. And you can use your ruler if you'd like. You can draw it freehand if you'd like. It doesn't really matter. The next step will be to draw lines from each of these corners to that point. This is your vanishing point. This is our first place where we're going to see what it means to have parallel lines converge on a single point off in the distance. So when we place our ruler here and we line it with the first corner of the box and the vanishing point, we'll draw a light line. We'll do that with the next line as well. And the final corner down here. Now this corner here um, will be hidden from view, but it can be helpful at this stage to actually draw that in. So now what we have is our box with a rectangular front face and then lines leading from each of the four corners back to that vanishing point. So the final step will be to draw in the back side. We'll do that with a horizontal line connecting across the back and a single vertical line running down here. And 
and there you have your box. Maybe a little bit difficult to see right now, so what I'll do is come back in and intensify these edges. And I like to do this final step freehand. It creates a, a looser and a more expressive mark that's still accurate, but it feels uh, more human, less mechanical. So there you have your box in one point perspective. And what I'd like you to do is to do this as many times as you can on the page. And you can kind of pick up the pace if you'd like. Draw a box in one point perspective. Here I have one crossing over the horizon line. And I'm choosing to do this freehand here. And what you're seeing me do is I'm pantomiming that angle before I'm actually making it. And then here, I just need one line down the back. I can place another one up in this corner. I can move, I can place them anywhere throughout the page. So I'm going to put one in, up here as well. I'm placing the back edges here, horizontal, connecting those two on the bottom, a vertical connecting the right side here. So there you have it, three boxes drawn in one point perspective, and I'd like you to do the same now. Draw at least three, fill the page up if you can of boxes in one point perspective before we move on to two point perspective next. So now we arrive at two point perspective. So as in one point perspective, we drew one dimension of a box in perspective. With two point perspective, we're drawing two dimensions in perspective. So as you might have guessed already, we're now going to have two vanishing points on the page. So let me walk you through that. Um, and again, at this stage, it's just important for you to follow along these steps. Um, as you do this, it'll become clear to you how two-point perspective plays out in the real world. So if you don't understand it at this point, that's to be expected. This is just an introduction to the concept, and we're going to dig into it deeper later on with more complex objects, so you're really going to have a firm grasp on it. So for now, though, just follow along these steps and just start practicing drawing objects in two-point perspective. Just draw simple boxes like we did before. So as with the first drawing, we're going to start with a horizon line. Now instead of one vanishing point, we're going to draw two. And we're going to place them on either side of that line. Now somewhere in the middle, we're going to draw a vertical line. I'm going to put mine right down in here. So what you've done here, if you're following along, is you've drawn the front corner of your box. This box is turned from us, um, so we're, the corner is projecting forward. Um, that's very different from the one-point perspective where the front face was facing us directly. So now the box is turned, we have the front corner drawn, and we're going to now draw lines connecting each vanishing point to the top and bottom edges of that vertical line. So now we have two dimensions of the box drawn. We have the, uh, we have the width and we have the depth drawn. All we have to do now is define the back edges of that box. So we're going to draw a vertical line down on one side here and a vertical line on this side. So now we've defined the edges of this box. And the final step will be to connect the back corners to the vanishing points. So in this case, we're taking the, the, this front intersection line here on the right, and we're going to lead it to the vanishing point on the left. And now we're going to take this front corner here on the left and lead it to the vanishing point on the right. And now you can come back in and darken these marks, clarifying the box as you need to so you can see it more accurately. So there you have your box 
in two-point perspective. And now what I'd like you to do is to start by drawing one box, but then as with the one-point perspective, draw as many of these boxes as you can throughout the page, covering over the horizon line, And you can see I wasn't all that accurate at that point, but I can come back in and start to straighten this out. So I have one that's drawn over the horizon line, but I'd also like you to draw them above and below. Now with this one above, you're going to be connecting these lower intersection points to their respective vanishing points. So now I have three boxes, one below, one covering over, and one above the horizon line. So I'd like you to do that, at least those three boxes, but I encourage you to do as many as you can on this page. So we've drawn boxes in one-point perspective and two-point perspective, so now we move on to three-point perspective. Now again, we're going to be revisiting all of these concepts later, so it's just important for you now to practice these exercises just as a warm-up, kind of priming your mind to take in some of these later concepts. So if you don't really understand what's happening now, that's perfectly fine. I just want you to go through these exercises and we'll dig into them later. So now what we're gonna be doing is working again on three-point perspective. And remember, in one-point perspective, we put one dimension of the object in perspective. We uh, drew, drew the, the depth dimension. Uh, the two-point perspective, we rotated that box, so we drew two dimensions in perspective using two vanishing points. Now we're going to be drawing, um, in three-point perspective, we're going to be applying perspective to the vertical edges, the depth. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to draw a horizontal line across the top of a vertical sheet of paper. You're going to place a vanishing point on the right and on the left. You're giving yourself plenty of space below because you're going to be putting a third vanishing point down near the bottom. Before we do that though, we want to create a rectangle in perspective just below the horizon line. So we're going to do that by drawing two lines to uh, the first vanishing point. and two lines to the other. So what we have here now is the top to our box, drawn in perspective using the first two vanishing points. From here, we're gonna place another vanishing point down near the bottom of the page. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna run lines from that point to each of the four corners of this box. So what we've got now is we have the top of our box drawn in perspective, and now we have the sides drawn in perspective as well. They're leading away from us. This puts us in a bird's eye view. We are above it looking down. So our final step now is to define the bottom edge of this box. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to come along the front corner of this box, place a point, that'll define the bottom edge, and I'm going to run a line from this point to each of the vanishing points. And so there you have it. We'll darken this in so you can see it uh, more clearly. And 
And there you have it. You have a box in three-point perspective. And this can be really helpful for you to understand, even though we're very rarely going to actually use a third vanishing point. So many times it's going to be so far off the bottom of the page or so far off the top that it becomes impractical to use. But it's really critical that you understand that in a three-dimensional object, all three dimensions will apply some sort of perspective to it. So just by narrowing the bottom of the object, you create a convincing sense of depth. And so even though, like I said, you may not use that third vanishing point, understanding the basic principle will come in handy. And again, we're going to be revisiting these concepts later. So if it doesn't make sense to you now, we're going to get there. And I just want you to go through and practice, practice these exercises to get comfortable with these concepts before we dig into something that's more complex.